you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does that mean to you? Well, I think it goes to this, to this whole area that um, we want to look good. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we'll try to make other people not look so well mm. so we can look better. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, when we talk about lies, we think of big lies and they're mm -hmm. bad. And, but sometimes they're exaggerations <laughs> uh -huh. of a truth. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. They're not, and they're kind of putting your spin or your angle on mm -hmm. some facts and maybe even omitting, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, uh, like a sin of omission of some of the other facts that might color the picture differently. And uh, that, that speaks to me of this whole trust issue, uh -huh. issue right? Yeah. We can't really trust God. We've got to, we've got to raise ourselves up to look good mm -hmm. so the people around us realize how brilliant we are. Uh, but the Bible says this, humility comes before honor. And you look at... Uh, uh, you know, you look at the Bible, there's story after story after story that uh, these guys didn't start on top. Mm -hmm. Even though, uh, you know, at a young age, maybe like David anointed as king, mm -hmm. I would have thought, done. I can walk anywhere. I have great influence. I'll step into my position, and here we go. Not all true. Humility before honor. Yeah, yeah, he was hope. chased around. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that that part of the world and and, and uh, Saul wanted to kill him uh -huh. you know he was a refugee uh -huh. even his own men wanted to kill him after a while before uh -huh. this thing turned around yeah. and uh, uh, so this this is a uh, a thing that we've got to realize mm -hmm. we've got to tr we've got to trust God that in this and not always try to paint ourselves in the best light I'm preaching to myself mm -hmm. there's times that I would like to really paint myself in a better light than I'm in mm -hmm. I would yeah uh, and there's times I do. Huh. It's not right. That's yeah. lying. Mm -hmm. And so we do that uh, to our neighbors, those that are close to us. Uh, that way it looks like we are uh, higher and uh, uh, in better position or, or more spiritual or whatever you mm -hmm. want, you know, whatever spin you want to put on it than somebody else. Don't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Don't do it. Uh, it's not beneficial. Yeah. Uh, God will work out all the stuff. Let, even if there's times where you, I, I should have had the credit for that. Mm -hmm. You ever have those times? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Somebody's putting the spin on me. You don't need to really go straighten all that out. Uh, God runs the accounts, and uh, one way or another, they'll be uh, they'll be rectified, um, and that's where the trust uh -huh. issue comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, um, thou shall not bear. Uh, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So you have to look at it still. But. Um, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, when we were talking before the show, you know, the, the, this this um, the spin I put on it was a little different than what you put on it, and and again, that's okay. So I'm looking at more like at the Bible, kind of the last days and this big um, lying facade that's that's coming over us. And I like deception, I think, deception, yeah, yeah huh. the great deception. So I want to read um, out of Second Thessalonians and just um, talk about that just a little bit. Um, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who did not receive the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Um, I read this and I think, wow, you know, um, if somebody doesn't love the truth, it's going to be so easy for them to be caught up in this deception. Um, and to some extent, we want to be caught up in, you know, it's a choice mm -hmm. that, uh, we, you know, we don't want to um, walk with God or submit to God. And, and so we like to, you know, come up with our own stuff, our own rules. Um, and, you know, it's just, and God allows it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, to have a love affair with somebody, uh, it's, it's voluntary. Uh, you never get forced into a, lo a, a love affair, and that's what God's after is a love affair, and so it's a voluntary thing. Um, and, and people uh, want to rule a lot of times their own lives and under their own rules, and even though the, that's not beneficial, God's rules are beneficial. Um, in the long run, man's rules aren't beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes people even go as far as when they're in the deception uh, uh, and have gone into this so deep that you know they, they make wild statements like the Bible isn't true, uh, God doesn't exist, uh, 
all these things. Mm -hmm. And what I think is interesting is it has no effect on the truth. Mm -hmm. No, when, it doesn't. When you got a group of people back in Columbus's day together and they proclaimed that the earth was flat, it mm -hmm. had no bearing on the truth. Mm -hmm. And so I think about the scripture where it says, uh, God sits on his throne, he listens to man and, and all his proclamations, and God sits on his throne and laughs. That's in the Psalms. Because it's, it's, mm -hmm. not a, it's, it's not something that it, uh, it demeans God as, as far, it doesn't uh, mm -hmm. uh, cause him to think less of who mm -hmm. he is than he is. He already knows he's, he's a self-confident God. Mm -hmm. uh, he, mm -hmm. You're not, um, the, only, the only way you're hurting his feelings is, is, um, is to see your life being sucked down and destroyed. Mm -hmm. that's, that's painful to, to God, but you're not, a, you're not offending his character. He knows ha, what his character is, and it's w without a reproach. Mm -hmm. um, so be careful of the things you buy into, because in, mm -hmm. the, in the long run, they're not helpful to you. Mm -hmm. God is being helpful. He created everything. He knows how it operates, and he's given you the manual. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend. It's like today I was reading the manual to my motorcycle because I've got to change some filters and I've got to do some maintenance on it. Um, it's better to read that manual than to start wrenching on the thing uh, with my own good ideas. Yeah. You know, there it, it was popular to say, as you were talking about the earth being flat back then, but I heard there was a group of people back then too who said, no, the Bible says the earth is round as a globe. A sphere, yeah. Yeah, and so um, that, that was in the Bible. It doesn't change. But people, yeah, but people chose um, to believe the lie that the earth was flat. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we're going into these days, you know, with deception and Hollywood, um, again, what they're putting down is a completely opposed to God, but they're doing it in a really clever way. They see what people are going to buy into, and they'll go along with it and get people kind of to turn towards what, what their agenda is. And then they'll put out more, and it'll get a little worse. And we need to be um, aware we don't get them Well, stuck really, that. Uh, for everybody, the only way to be aware is to check it with the truth. Yeah, yeah. Get in a good uh, Bible-believing church and, and uh, learn some things. That's right. Okay, so the very first slide um, <coughs> in Genesis 2, uh, <coughs> the story of the serpent. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die and then later on in that chapter when the serpent said in uh, to the woman you will not surely die so the serpent is the devil in disguised i guess back then uh, snakes could snakes snakes could talk i guess um for god knows that in the day that you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil and the story goes, the woman believed the serpent instead of what God originally said, mm -hmm. ate the fruit, Adam went along with it, and, um, you know, here we got a world that um, is uh, pretty crazy right now because of the original sin. And um, we're, all, we're, we're, we're too often eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil ourselves. We almost can't blame it on this situation because we do it ourselves. We compromise is what it's saying. Instead of the tree of life. Instead of the tree of life, with the, which is the full truth. Right, right. Yep. And the Bible uh -huh. says that, that the deceptions would be so great that yeah. even the elect could, would be deceived uh -huh. if they could be. Right. And in fact, I encourage um, people to go to uh, Revelation 13 and 14. Um, we didn't have time to get to that. Can, um, I, can I make one more comment before yes, we go? Yes. Okay. Go it has to do with forgiveness, which is super important it in is. our lives. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible's clear. Uh, you know, we may be carrying grudges that's not good for us, it's not healthy for us, and it's not uh, good, uh, right for us to do. Uh, the Bible's clear. It says if we don't forgive, mm -hmm. then we don't get forgiven yeah. by the Father. That's, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. It's a good trade-off to forgive so I can get some forgiveness. And piggybacked with that is the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this before we went on the air, is... Um, think about the, the, the way you measure other people and how you judge them. The Bible's clear. Whatever measure that you use will be then used on you. Yeah. Be, for me, I want to be merciful because right. I, want that, I want leniency, please. Mm -hmm. I need leniency. Mm -hmm. In order to get leniency, I need to show leniency and mercy. Yeah, right. That's so good. So I recommend it. Yep. Forgiveness is a huge key on everything. Um, It'll free you, you know, from a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, free you from a lot of stuff, including, you know, the, the, when we were talking about the youth, that um, maybe their parents or people around them lied to them and said they were no good. You know, that the way to get free from that, a huge way, is to forgive and know that they um, um, said it, but they, they were probably hurt themselves. Um, 
So I want to c conclude with the, he was talking about the deception of the last days and, and things like that. Um, I want to read out of Levit Leviticus 26. Um, there is a lot it says, but um, it says here, if you walk in my statues and keep my commandments and perform them, and then I'm moving on to the next uh, verse, few, few verses later, I will give you peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. You will chase your enemies, and then, um, and they shall fall by the sword before you. And then um, on a, several verses, um, and if these things you are not reformed by me, by, but walk contrary to me, then I'll also walk contrary to you, and I'll punish you seven times for your sins and bring a sword against you that will execute the vengeance of the covenant. When you are gathered together within your cities, I will send pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Now, um, I, I said that because that's what the Bible says, that's the truth. However, there's um, some, a lot of hope in what I'm reading because no matter which direction the politics goes and um, our land goes, um, we still have um, what I like to talk about, the, the safety and the Ark of the Covenant. We have, if we're in, abiding in the shadow of God's wings, um, there's three things that he put in the Ark of the Covenant, which I believe um, represents um, Jesus. So you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, um, salvation will be in your heart, um, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, the staff, the Holy Spirit, um, you'll, he'll guide and direct you, um, with, you'll, you'll excel in gifts and power and authority that God gives you according to your faith, and um, he'll lead you to the truth, which is uh, the Ten Commandments, which is why I'm talking about the Ten Commandments right now. Hope that encourages you, and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.